I'm gonna use a case study of a specific situation, right? Because oftentimes, you know, when I when I went on YouTube and I looked up how to make more money, right? A lot of this stuff is general and these content creators are, are just pointing you to the opportunities, which is good. So this is not gonna be one of those videos because it's already out there. It's already been said a million thousand times over of the high paying jobs that are out there, jobs that pay 50, 100 plus dollars an hour, um, low barrier to entry, don't need a degree, right? Don't need major skills and experience to get these high paying jobs. Then you have all the content creators that talk about all of the side gigs that you can get into while doing your full time job which is cool. This ain't going to be that type of video. This is going to be looking at a specific numbers, situation, case study, a career, and how we can add to what this person's existing skills, gifts, and talents are to increase what they're making on a, on a monthly basis, set proper goals, set the strategy and go, you're off, right? So here we are four major numbers on the board. Got a person making 6,000 a month. Expenses are 5,275. Total debt is $450,000. The debt consists of a mortgage and a car loan. That's it. All credit card debt has been removed, student loans, um, personal loans. So this is someone that fully knows and understands Velocity Banking, okay? They've been doing it since say 2020, I believe, or in year 2021. They have a debt tool, okay? Second position HELOC, 90K. 4.5% simple interest, cash on hand. So they have savings, 20 grand. Um, prior to meeting me, they, you know, built up, they were saving and investing money in their 401k Roth IRA. So roughly this is how much is in there. Um, so I rounded down and then what they're contributing to both accounts in the Velocity Banking strategy. In addition to using their HELOC, they've got a credit card that they're using to run bills. $2,500 a month, 2% cashback rewards on average. It's a 50 year old individual, two kids, divorce, single mom. Okay. Oftentimes I'm working with single moms, divorced moms, widows, moms in general that want to regain their authority on this planet. Okay. They want to regain everything they lost, right? They want to recover, restore, build a new thing. They're ready to reinvent themselves. So that's the type of moms I'm talking to. Okay. So 50 years old educator in the industry, 25 years. This is a person that has taught middle school, I believe, high school, college. They're, you know, out of the classroom, more so in the, in the board of, of education, right? They're, they, they sit in the different rooms. They're not exactly teaching in the classroom type of educator at this point, but they've done that, right? So this is going to be very advantageous if you're in this industry, right? And I want to reveal some strategic opportunities in the marketplace that have arised in the last few years or have become more pertinent, more impactful, more important to the average household than ever before, okay? Very, very key in how we figure out how do we make more money, right? How do we strategize? And so this is just showing you an example of what I would do. Everything that I know now, if I had to restart, this is the route that I would go personally. I'm gonna look within my skills, gifts, and talents, and then figure out a way to monetize that and get paid abundantly. So person's recently divorced, right? Single mom, two kids. The kids are grown. They're all, I think they're, two, both of them are above 18, right? Um, but they still live with mom, right? But uh, they contribute. So that it's essentially, they're not holding her back from her time, if that makes sense, right? When you're, when you have little kids that can reduce the amount of free time you have available, right? Especially if you're a mom working full time, then you got to come home, you know, raise kids, right? Cook, clean, bop, 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 right? You're, you're all over the place. So in this situation, that's, that's not what, that is not what's happening here. We've uh, mapped out roughly five to eight hours of free time per week. Okay. That's roughly 20 hours a month, 240 hours a year that we could allocate to discovering this person's purpose, what they are destined to do on this planet. Okay. We can approach it logically. We can approach it spiritually. I like to do both, merge them both. Faith and finance is coming together, right? Why not take advantage of all that we can use, right? To identify what we need to do on this planet. So here's the strategy, straightforward, simple. I've simplified it in other videos. I go much deeper, but today we're gonna just simplify and then go right into what I would be, what I would be doing 
if I was an educator, right? Which technically I am, right? I'm a teacher. I teach. I educate. I love doing it. I don't got no certifications. I didn't go to college for it. And in the today's marketplace, that's what's beautiful is you don't need a degree anymore to grab these different opportunities in the marketplace, right? In fact, the marketplace is asking for people outside of the system so that they can benefit even more, right? So here's the strategy. We're going to identify the problem in your purpose. Educator, mom, divorced, a lot of different topics we can cover here. A lot of different things we can cover. Very interesting, but just one, one problem that this educator expressed to me, this teacher, was student loans, student loan debt, right? Mom explained how she helped her kids basically go to college debt free and herself. So I'm like, don't you understand how important that information is? If you created a business just around that one problem, could we not like turn this 6,000 and add another zero at the end of that? Very easily, or I should say very simply with a strategic strategy to move forward with. So that's the problem we identified, student loan debt. That's the big problem that they wanna tackle right? They can do that in the form of consulting, coaching, um, courses, masterminds, programs, live events, virtual events, hybrid events, um, government contracts, right? Working with the state, local municipalities, local cities, working with nonprofits, working with corporations. I just named 10 things, right? Not bad. Identify the problem in your purpose. Already did. Great. Create a solution. What's the solution? The things I just mentioned right? Courses, coaching, consulting, that is your solution to that family's problem. They're searching how to go to college debt-free. Either the kid is searching that or the mom or dad is searching that and they're figuring out how to convey that message to their children. And you could be very effective in teaching them that, create a solution. Once you've figured out what direction I want to go in to create that solution, now we just have to market and monetize your solution. Here's how I would market and monetize my solution, right? You got to start with your personal story. One of the very first videos that I did on this YouTube channel, um, you can you can scroll all the way back and you'll see me um, talking to a group of people. I had a whiteboard and then a um, like a projector screen on the side. OK, some of you know that know this video and I was telling my story. I was presenting the problem. OK, here's the problem. Okay, here's my story on how I'm going to help you solve that problem. Now I'm showing the solution, which is the strategy, Velocity Banking, Infinite Banking, Kingdom Authority. Here we are today, four years later. Boom. Okay, very simple. So you got to lead with personal story. I believe that's very important. I actually don't do that very often on this channel. I usually do it on other people's channels. And then they come to my channel with the meat and potatoes, the content. But nonetheless, this, this needs to be addressed. From there, you want to document documentation. You simply want to document what you are doing, everything that you are doing to identify the problem, create a solution, market and monetize. Just document. So if you don't know what type of content to create, let's say, right, you're scared to get in front of the camera, whatever. There's podcasts. Don't like your voice, whatever. There's photos and blogging. So there's no excuse, okay, as to what we need to do to get into the marketplace, what we need to do to create content. Over time, you'll get over those fears because of your purpose, right? When your purpose becomes more important than your ego, that is when the shift occurs in your mind and the game changes for you, right? So documentation from there, case studies. What do you, what do you guys see on my channel all the time? Case studies, case studies, case studies, real life stuff right? You can go general and attract a bunch of people or you can go niche, right? You pick. There is success in both, right? There's success in both. Now, arguably, arguably, if you go the niche route where you target a specific audience according that ideal client, that ideal avatar, arguably, it is said you'll be in business longer than the person that goes general. The person that goes general potentially can go viral very quickly, no doubt at all. Can get a lot of media attention quickly, no doubt at all, okay? But if they do not keep up with the trends, if they do not keep up with what society is talking about, right? Then you can become very quickly yesterday's news, yesterday's news, okay? Very quickly. An example would be when COVID hit 2020 in the finance space, specifically, a lot of YouTubers messed themselves up pretty bad, 
right? Especially in the finance. So if you were, if you are a finance content creator and in 2020 COVID hit a couple months later, they released all those different acts, right? What were they? Comment. I forget the name. So there's these different, um, like how they were sending paychecks. Okay. They were talking about that, how to get your paycheck. Then they were going into PPP loans, SBA loans, SBA 7A. Then they were, you know, talking, they were throwing politics into it right and don't get me wrong their channels blew up these were content creators that were at 10,000 subs 5,000 subs they jump 500,000 a million right 750,000 okay fast forward to today not many of them are creating content anymore why they they left their niche their core audience they left them to the side they started talking about what everybody's talking about so that they could get views like subscribes little did they know that whole audience they were attracting had nothing to do with their core message of finance the people that they were attracting were just looking for free money versus when you were talking to your core audience you were helping people get out of debt pay off their student loans create more discipline right and then you veered off started talking about all this mumbo jumbo stuff because it was trendy and now you have to stay in it so now your core audience has left they gone to someone else that stayed in their niche and now you have to stay with the trend so now you have put yourself as a almost like a political finance content creator now if that was the play great but if that wasn't the play and you're a creator now deep down inside you're like I just want to help, you know, moms, dads pay off all their debt and invest better with their funds. But now I find myself always talking about what Biden just did, right? I have to update my audience on the next paycheck that's rolling out, the next act, the news that they missed. And that can be extremely draining if that's not your purpose. So again, if you go general, you can go big very quickly. You can get a lot of followers lot of sponsorship deals but do you have the mental capacity to keep it going are you willing to be adaptable to jump into different topics that keeps up with the trends if that's in your purpose if that's in your alignment cool but if it's not now you're now you're a fraud not to the to the people necessarily but to yourself eventually you'll crack and it'll show and then your audience guess where they go as fast as they came they go faster to the next to the next audience right versus if you stay in your niche it might take a while right it's gonna be tough right it will be slow at first nobody knows you nobody knows that you've been an educator for 25 years other than your friends and family and some co-workers even your friends and family don't even know how long you've been say educating right they couldn't tell you right off the bat they couldn't tell you what you do they don't really know they just know you work in education right but your core audience your niche audience they'll know you'll feel like they know you better than your own friends and family okay sometimes that that right there that core audience is what will keep you going keep you going keep you going keep you going right and then you'll eventually you'll create a nice size community that you can you know build from build a credibility keep it going before you know it now you dominate in that particular space it's yours right so that's just an example of how we can market and monetize go general or go niche i prefer to go niche so that's talking about your personal story documentation of what you're doing what the problem is right what your purpose is the solution and providing case studies as you take on more and more clients right free or paid from there we identify what your story is we create that signature message right like how you hear on my YouTube channel, when I start a video all the time, I say, you know, hi, my name is Denzel Rodriguez, personal finance geek, 21st century. On this YouTube channel, we cover the velocity banking concept, infinite banking, kingdom authority, dot, dot, dot. My whole mission, purpose in life is to help moms get out of debt, regain their authority, become masters over their finances. I want to see moms choose to work and not have to work. I want to I want to see mom at a position where she does no longer has to go to work, but she chooses to work. Right. When the message is so like clear, you can feel that through the camera. Right. So you got to get to that point, whether that's rehearsing, talking, um, sharing, uh, you know, explaining it to friends and family to the point where you get so comfortable in your purpose. It's like breathing. You can identify your purpose just like you breathe. It's it, you don't think you don't have to think about your purpose because you know it so well. It's engraved. It's part of you all day long, just like you breathe. It's part of you. It's part of your system. 
it's how you live. If you don't breathe, you, you die, right? Every human, the moment we stop breathing, what happens? You die. Well, if you can make your purpose as important or even more important than breathing, then you will live forever. My goodness, my goodness. So from there, we need to create a channel, right? This is notes, this is notes in your book, right? You're, you're creating the strategy. Now we're going to, this is the more action steps of, okay, actually going on the computer, going on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, whatever platform you wanna use, we need to create a channel, right? Let's say we use YouTube, okay? In this situation, YouTube would be very, very advantageous for an educator because YouTube is an AKA YouTube university. It is the how to place to search how to, how to do this, how to do that. Why should I do this? When should I do that? Where do I go get this? Why is this? It's the who, what, when, where, why, how of, of search. That's where you want to be if you're in education. So if I had to start all over again on my YouTube channel, right? This is exactly how I would do it, right? And the other action step here is there a, there's a playlist called how to create kingdom content, right? It's two videos and it talks about the 90, 90, 90 day rule to create content, 90 days of prep, 90 days of creation, 90 days of execution. That is a strategy, right? To create a lot of content and never run out of content. And you get on a consistent flow of creating content that your audience can become aware of. And that will result in higher views, higher watch time, right? More loyal core audience You go from there. The only tweak that I would make to that strategy and what I did to start my YouTube channel, the very first thing I would do once I've prepped content, prepped the strategies and started creating in that second 90 day window of creation, I would live stream, right? I would immediately start live streaming. Even if nobody is there, even if one person shows up, doesn't matter. I would start live streaming. Like I would just literally boom, hit go live on YouTube and start explaining my message, right? Cause in the beginning, when you are creating content about your purpose, about your vision, about your mission, about what you do, how you do it, why you do it, right? When you're in the your own little studio and you're creating content that's pre-recorded, here is what's going to happen, right? Here's what happens. Okay. Da -da -da. All right. Okay. Boom. I, okay. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is Denzel Rodriguez. Uh, okay. Hi, my name is Denzel Rodriguez. Your hi, my name is Denzel Rodriguez, personal finance geek, 21st century. On this YouTube channel, we cover. All right. Oh my God. Hi, my name is Denzel Rodriguez. No, that's stupid. That doesn't make sense. Hey, how are you guys? Um, no, that's stupid. No, mm -mm, don't like it. See what's happening? How long was that? Five minutes turns into 15 minutes. And if you're a woman, it's even worse. Is my hair right? Is my makeup right? Da, da, da. You know, oh, I need to change the shirt. Wrong lighting. Oh, terrible, 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 terrible strategy. That will cost you that five to eight hours of free time. If you're a busy mom, you're a busy dad, it's gonna cost you so much time. Versus you click go live. Oh shoot, you live. Can't you, you mess up, keep going, right? You mess up, keep it going. Here's what's beautiful. When you mess up, whoever's watching you, they don't care. They came because of the title and the thumbnail and the description on the thumbnail of how to make more money. They do not care how you look, how you talk, okay? They don't care your background. Can they hear you? Can they hear you? Can they see whatever you're illustrating? That That's more important than you, right? That's, that's more important than you. So when you get out of your own self, I think the fastest way to get out of your own self is to literally go live, go you live stream. It's literally like being in front of people. Once you're in front of people, you're no longer thinking if your hair is done right. If you did your makeup right, if your shirt is like, you know, ripped or hanging, you're no longer thinking of any of that. You're not thinking of ums, like so's, you know, oh, shoot, mess that up. Okay. Replay stop. You hit stop. Then you hit record again. Nobody cares. But if you live stream, that's where it's at. So that's the only tweak that I would make to my, you know, if I had to do it all over again, 
in terms of creating content, becoming a, a YouTuber content creator, I would immediately start live streaming. I, you can schedule the live stream, which is awesome. So you can schedule it a week or two in advance. You can text your friends and family. Hey, I'm going to be doing a live stream. Would love your support, right? Friends, family, coworkers. If you have any social media presence whatsoever, you make a simple post saying, Hey, I'm going live. You can attach the link to Facebook. Um, on Instagram, you can just make a post and you can put the link in your bio to the live stream on any other like LinkedIn. You put the link, you put the link. It takes them to YouTube to where you go live. Right. So live stream. What's awesome about live streaming is you probably these are typically long an hour, hour and a half, two hours. Nobody goes live for 10 minutes, right? 15 minutes, 20 minutes. No way. You typically go live for at least over 30, 45 minutes. And in most cases, it's between an hour and two hours long. An hour to two hours of footage can easily be repurposed for short clips, okay? So you can take your three main topics that you addressed in that live stream about student loan debt, um, three tips on applying for scholarships, the three, the five main things you need to have in your personal statement or resume when you're applying for a scholarship, when you're applying to a college, when you're filling out financial aid, how to fill out financial, like all these different topics you address in the live stream. Say you have two to three at, at most, or maybe one. And then if somebody showed up and had questions, that question is a piece of content, right? Like I'm looking in the comment section right now and whoever puts a comment in my comment section, right? Then I go answer it, right? Let's say I just throw up this comment right here. This is true, Denzel. I was following someone that I liked the content. Suddenly he was talking about other people's work and I lost interest about his content. So let's say there was a question that came up with that, right? Let's just say that person had a question. I read the question. That's literally how the video can start. That's literally what the title of the video can be. Whatever the person's question was, they see the question. When the video starts, I read it, I answer it. They then maybe respond. Thank you. Appreciate that. Video's done. Three minute clip. Nothing crazy, right? So it can easily be repurposed for short clips, which understand here's how the math breaks down in terms of creating a massive amount of content in a short period of time. Your live stream is considered one piece of content, right? And if you're really effective, Okay, you can use a platform such as Ecamm Live, which is what I use, and I'll I'll put the link uh, in the in the chat so you guys can check that out when you have the time. If you're positioning yourself for this and you want to go this route, Ecamm Live. I am currently at the moment I'm live on my Facebook page, right? YouTube, of course, where mostly all of you are at, and Facebook. So three platforms. That's three pieces of content one time so three one became three right velocity banking in content creation one became three right how do we use one dollar more than once how do we create content more than once using the same piece of content so one just became three in in my case right from there that live stream i did say it goes two hours like in this time that we're spending right now it might go up to two it might stop at an hour and a half we don't know once it's done that video is there it stays there publicly people can catch the recording right understand not everybody's gonna sit for an hour and a half and listen to me ramble for an hour and a half they're coming for specific things that they're like oh yeah boom i need that thank you bye right that's what the repurposing is for so i download the live stream off my computer maybe i put it on my phone or i'm using let's say you're using one of those video editing softwares like like um i can't even think of any of the the names there's one that mac has imovie something um there's dubsado yeah i think that's what it's called uh, or delgado something i forget but essentially you have these video editing platforms either you pay someone or you do it yourself from there you can repurpose that one piece of content you could probably easily get 10 to 15 plus videos from a two hour session no doubt say you answered five questions in that video that's five separate pieces of content then there's the topic that you were addressing how to make more money that's one piece of content right then there's you know maybe you have an offer or something that you're selling that's a piece of content by itself seven right and then there's other variations. Maybe you said something motivational. That's a piece of content. Maybe you said something inspirational. Boom, that's a piece of content. Maybe you gave a, a quick tip on, you know, student loan debt. You gave three tips on how to reduce student loan debt via scholarships 
and applications or internships. That's three pieces of content. You're at 10. Oh my goodness. Right. But now here's where the number goes crazy. Now that you have the three, one became three. So you have three. Now you have 10 to 15 pieces of repurposed short clips, right? Under, let's say you got the full number, say 15. You have a YouTube channel. That's one avenue. Let's say you have an Instagram, a Facebook. Because you're an educator, you definitely have a LinkedIn, no doubt. Here's where the number goes crazy. 15 times four, right? What's that? 30, 45, 60? Did I get that right? I don't know how to do math, but I am the finance geek. So let me just pull out my calculator real quick. Oh my God, look at that. Beautiful, 60. Now you have 60 pieces, uh, 63 pieces of content, one live stream. Is that like mind blowing for you? Cause it is for me. That's what I didn't realize when I first started creating content. I was over here pre-recording, trying to say the perfect lines. Hi, my name is Denzel. Da -da 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 -da. And on this YouTube channel, da -da 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 -da. nobody cares. They're like, how do you make more money, Denzel? I don't care what you do. How do I make more money? And and so I go right into it now. And then I'll explain stuff later, right? I gotta serve first in order to be served. Gotta serve for gotta give first in order to receive. Principles, man. That's all it is. So we got 63 pieces of content that will that can get posted every single day. So on on Monday you went live. On Tuesday, you reposted on Instagram. On Wednesday, Facebook. On Thursday, LinkedIn. On Friday, YouTube again, right? And so you can just keep it flowing or you can create schedules for each thing. Like that's what I do. So I have a schedule for YouTube, right? Mondays, Wednesday, Wednesdays, Fridays, and now Saturdays. So I'm pretty much posting nowadays. I'm, you know, I was doing three times a week. Now I'm amping it up to four and five times a week right? On Insta, I do it on the days that I don't post on YouTube. So that's Tuesday and Thursday, typically. And then if it's like Facebook and LinkedIn, I'll post on the same day that I posted, say on YouTube and Instagram, but at different times. So YouTube is at 12, then I might post something on Facebook at two or three o'clock in the afternoon. And here's the beautiful part. All of this can be scheduled. So I don't have to be there. I can schedule YouTube. I can schedule Insta. I can schedule Facebook. LinkedIn, I don't know. I don't know how to schedule on LinkedIn, but you knocked out three of the platforms. You got 60 plus pieces of content, right? So that's where it's like you repurpose the original for short clips, which then gets repurposed for other platforms, which quadruples the amount of content you have. And all you did was one live stream. Can you imagine if you live streamed three times a week, right? Four times, five times when you're first starting out, especially if you're someone that's transitioning five to eight hours of free time. If I live stream two hours per live stream or an hour, hour and a half, how many live streams can I do in a week? Doesn't matter what what the, what time of the day is. It, it's about what your schedule is, what you can do. Your audience will cater their schedule to be there for you, just like they cater their schedule to watch Game of Thrones, House of Dragons, Mandalorian, The Walking Dead, okay? That's wasting their time versus you're creating an opportunity to help them regain their time, fix their money, change their change the next three generations in their household for the for the benefit. Right. So that's what that looks like. That's the strategy that we're identifying here. Right. Identify the problem and your purpose. Create a solution. What's the solution in this case? Student loan debt. Right. This person wants to say coach, consult. Right. And um, provide services to their ideal client, which in this case, you can use your personal story to attract your ideal client, right? And that's why the personal story is very important because it's going to resonate. It's going to make that person say, you know what? I want to work with Denzel over the other guy because I too was raised by a single mom. I can't tell you how many men I have as clients that are dads now they're in their 50s, right? Late 40s, even 60s. And they reveal to me, I was raised by a single mom. I saw my my mom abused. I saw, you know, my dad, dot, dot, dot. My dad, dot, 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 right? I witnessed divorce. I'm now married. I changed, right? I shifted my strategy. So when you're, when you're attracting your core audience all the time, every single time, niching down, whether it's Holy Spirit working to provide to you spiritually or just approaching it logically speaking, if you speak it enough times into the marketplace, that person that needs to hear that message is 
unconsciously looking for it. Like when you're in a situation, a mom that just got divorced a year ago, two years ago, do you find it funny how when you're going to pick up your kids from school or you're going to an event of some sort or you're hanging out with friends and family or you're meeting new people and they're also, they also just got divorced? And so now your buddies, right? It just, you just somehow, oh, you just got, I just got divorced. Yeah, I just left them or I just left her. Or yeah, you know, just after 10 years, after 15 years. And then that person says, I was married 20. I just got divorced. I don't know. You don't find that funny how that happens. You're like, huh? And you just brush it off. Well, in business, right? Translate that, convert that to monetization and business and marketing. I am consistently attracting single moms, divorced moms, widows. Why? Because I constantly say it. I was raised by a single mom. I did this. I saw this. I witnessed that. I witnessed abuse. I witnessed this. Then the mom says, I was a part of that. Nobody, nobody talks like this. So they could have went over there to the person with more, more experience, more money, better content, better, you know, visuals and, and, and flash. But they chose me, some kid, 26 years old. And they're like, what the hell does he know about moms and raising kids? I don't, I don't know a thing. I'm a, I'm a witness. I observed for the last 26 years or technically from age four or five being my earliest memory. I've witnessed from the perspective of a child to a teen to an adult. So I'm coming from that perspective. The mom is like, oh my goodness, how do I... Re, re, regenerate, you know, recover that relationship I lost with my kids because of the divorce or the, or, you know, a loss in the family or traumatic event, right? So you, you discuss these things with your personal story. You start documenting. That is how it starts to really come together, right? So we've identified the problem, right? So we're going to write it out here now, which is student loan debt. That's what this educator wants to address. They can do that. They can position themselves as a coach or consultant. These are familiar words that most people already know. Coach, consultant, student loan advisor, right? Educator. I'm an educator. I educate families on how to remove student loan debt or how to avoid student loan debt, right? Dot, 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 dot. Cool. So you've identified what your role is. You're providing a solution and you've decided, yes, you know, I'm going to create um, some PDF documents that I would send to the client. So different docs. This is this is um, the free stuff that attracts them. Oh, wow. That was really good. Yeah. PDF, maybe an ebook, something simple, nothing crazy. You're, you're getting their attention. They're already searching it, right? You're now providing it right to them, okay? Some PDFs, some docs, the free content, okay? Watch how many hats you put on, but how we do not overwhelm ourselves because there's a strategy, there's a system, there's a process for each thing, and they all coexist together. They all come in together in alignment, very nice and clean, right? So after we've identified the strategies, what we're going to do, we've decided to do live streaming. That's your, that's your first move is live streaming. In the live stream, you're saying, download my PDF doc here, download my ebook here, go to my email newsletter, right? So you're going to collect people's emails, contact info. When I first started out, I was using JotForm. It's free. So you can have a link on the live stream, in the chat, in the comment section, in the description. The JotForm will gather the person's first, last name, email, phone, maybe even address, okay? Um, some questions. What are your goals? What are you trying to accomplish? You're trying to gather data so that you can provide exactly what you need to that individual, okay? So we're live streaming. We've already got the process and strategy implemented. You live stream as you're talking, put in the link, chat, boom. You want to take action with me. Here's how you do that. Fill out this form, right? They click the link. The viewer clicks the link. They put their information in. After they put their information in, automatically PDF doc gets sent to them via email, right? The docs go via email. The ebook goes to the prospect or, or client. Your content will continue to feed that cycle, okay? Everything right here, automatic, because you did it in advance. So this is all automatic. The only thing that's manual is the live streaming and the posting of the links. All these things right afterwards, auto, automatic, not bad. So from there, once you've generated the lead, you have the lead, they now 
they have your stuff. They're probably going to come back to your channel, watch more videos, learn more about you. They'll probably Google you. They'll do their due diligence. In the meantime, you're nurturing. Nurture. As a mother, is that not one of your instinctive gifts on planet Earth? Is nurturing? Do you not know how to already... You've nurtured too in your life for the for the past 20, 25 years, however, however old your kids are. So nurturing... You've got down packed, mom, not bad. Look how this skill is now going to be monetized to create more wealth than you could ever imagine in your life. It's incomprehensible, okay? Nurture. What does nurture look like? That looks like more emails, right? A personal message, right? A little, a little investment, personal message. That's you sending a personal email directly to that person, not an automated one, personal message. Hi, Karen. Hi, Susan. Hi, Jessica. Hi, Joe. Hi, Tom. Hello. Thank you for completing the contact form. Based on your responses and information given, I recommend you check out this live stream I just did on three tips to avoid student loan debt. Three tips on educating your children, inspiring them to want to do this, right? How to motivate them. By the way, if you'd like to have a conversation with me, I just need you to fill out these other details right here and we can have a discovery call and bum, 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 go from there, right? So personal message. Hey, you can even go the distance, call the person. I've randomly called my leads before because I see certain numbers. I see a certain situation. I was like, you know what? I feel like I'm in alignment with this person. I'm going to send them a personal message. I might even call them. Or because I have such a busy schedule now and everything is methodical in what I do, I do send a personal message to a particular lead that I acquire recently. I'll send a personal message with a link to book a phone call. Right. So in that personal message or that phone call or in your nurture email process over time, you can um, let's say you use Calendly because that's what I use. Use Calendly to have the lead automatically auto. This whole process is automatic. That's that's what's amazing here. So we book a call because you automatically had nurture emails going out or you saw a lead that was ideal right? You could even have in your initial form, are you a mom? Yes or no, right? It's not too invasive of a question. If you ask, are you divorced? Eh, a little bit personal, right? But you can say, are you a mom? You can say, are you married? Because that might be um, an important thing in regards to um, getting approved for financial aid, understanding how much income total is coming into the household. So that's not an invasive question, but it is a revealing question. So you could say, are you a mom? They say yes. That's a green flag for you. You're a mom, single. You you connect better, let's say, with moms. Let's say that's your ideal client. Moms in the around this age, right? Or or new moms. Maybe that's better because those moms have children that are under the age of 18 getting ready to go to college. So maybe you're like moms between the ages of 25 to 35. New moms, right? Oh, you know what? That might be too early, right? So maybe uh, moms between like, yeah, 35, 45, let's say, right? But you'll, you'll identify what that specific crowd is. Got it. Cool. You, you then say, are you married? She'll say yes. If she says no, she might say no, divorced. <gasps> Boom. Now you can relate to that woman very quickly. And you then send a personal message. Hey, by the way, I raised two kids on my own. Da, da, da. Just got divorced. Da, da, da. I think we're in alignment. I think we can really do a lot of great work together. Right. And then you'll express that in the personal message. That's the only manual part right here. If you do this or this, that's only manual. And that's two minutes of your time. You have five to eight hours a week free time. It's two minutes, right? Send the link. Calendly, that's automatically book a call, right? And you would create a calendar schedule according to your free time that you have. So this person cut out Game of Thrones, House of Drag, keeping up with the Kardashians, right? Housewives of Atlanta, Housewives of Orange County, Housewives of Beverly Hills, Housewives of New York, Basketball Wives, right? Walking Dead, Mandalorian, Disney Plus, Hulu, Netflix. They're like, yep, don't need that. They've went on a commitment to say, I'm removing all that garbage because that's what it is at the end of the day. Whether you're a f and guess what? All those shows that I'm mentioning, I've watched them too. I watch them. OK, they're entertaining as heck. That's the point. But at the end of the day, it's garbage because it's not making me any money. So I just wasted my time. I threw it in the garbage. That's essentially what has occurred when you sit down on the couch, right? You sit down on the couch, 
You watch a one hour episode when you could have been spending an hour emailing leads, calling your leads, right? You basically took that hour and you threw it in the trash because you're never getting that hour back, right? So if you make a commitment to yourself, right, this is this goes into the strategy part of things where we recover our time to put into creating more wealth, to create more time to watch the shows that you want to watch, right? Like for me, I want to be able to not just watch a show, right? But I want to be able to shake the hands of the actors of the show. I want to go to the premiere where where the actors watch their own thing in the theater, right? Like that to me is super cool. I want to be on the set of a show that ain't even out yet and I get to see it firsthand. That's the type of experience that I want to be able to have. How do I get there? Um, you need some money. You need big boy money, big girl money, right? You need some big dogs. You need some, you know, daddy warbucks money, okay? You need some big, mo big boy money, big girl money in order to get there. How do I get there? Identify the problem in my purpose, create a solution, market and monetize my solution, address it with my personal story, document what I'm doing, provide case studies, create a channel, live stream, repurpose, 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 live stream, repurpose, repurpose. From there, I'm in the system now. I've presented myself as a coach consultant. I have documents. I have, I have files, I have data for people to acquire. They fill out the form. Boom. That person becomes a lead. I identify the, I look at the lead. I read it. This is a mom. This is not a mom. This is a mom, single mom, divorced mom, not married, dot, dot, dot. Here's what she's trying to do. Here's her goals. Boom. Nurture with more emails, personal message, call them, have them book a call 30 minutes, right? Let's say you're qualifying that person. So you want to make sure that if you're going to give someone your time for free, you better be qualifying them. You need to ask qualifying questions, right? Like for example, I recently had a, a lead that I sent a personal message to. I was like, hey, how you doing? Thank you for completing the form in detail based on your um, numbers given and the responses. I feel like we're in alignment, okay? I think we could work together. They then, you know, I put the link to enroll in my services so they can make that investment. They were like, thank you, appreciate you. Yeah, I've been following you for a little while now. Um, I'd like to talk to you first. Is that possible, right? I'd like to have a conversation with you first before I spend that kind of money. Okay, I now have to process that. I say, well, this this person I already identified as an ideal client according to the information that they provided. So it would be of my best interest to give that person some of my time for free. And that's where you need to be very critique with that free time. You can do a 15 minute call, a 20 minute call. I would not do nothing more than 30 minutes when you're giving someone your time for free. The last thing you want to do is spend an hour and a half with someone, right? That wasn't qualified to work with you in the first place. That doesn't make any sense, right? So I give that person 30 minutes. I'll say, I already sent them a personal message. I sent them the link to book a call. I think we're going to, I think I'm going to speak with the person next week, right? 30 minutes in that call. I'm going to let them take the floor. How are you? Hi, this is Denzel. How you doing? Great. Yeah, thanks for taking my call. Pleasure having you. What can I do for you today? I'd like to, before we get started, I'd like to give you the floor. Just give me a little intro, additional information about yourself, whatever you'd like to share. Blah, 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 blah. They talk for about five to seven minutes. I'm clocking, right? I'm looking at the time. I'm paying attention. Five to seven minutes. If they keep rambling, I'll interject. I'll say, oh, so you're married. Great. Awesome. And based on the goals that is wife on board, by the way, with Velocity? Yes, yeah, she's on board. Got it. Um, so do you have a debt tool already? Yes, we, we're in the process. We've been conditionally approved for a HELOC. Okay, cool. Cash flows at 1,500 a month. Nice. Sometimes it goes down to about 1,000, you know, in, in the summer with the camps and stuff like that. Okay, cool. No, no, no. Credit scores are right. Okay, cool. Right. I'm, I'm going I'm 15, 17 minutes in. Okay, great. Um, so then I might ask another qualifying question. Hey, why, why me? All right. What made you hit my YouTube channel. Well, Denzel, um, you know, I was searching and I, I saw a couple of different channels first. You were in the suggested videos. It, it, it looked attract. I clicked on it and I couldn't, I couldn't get off. Um, I, I ended up binge watching for four hours. My wife and I were sitting on the couch together. We're watching all your videos. We, we missed our shows. Um, we, we've been able to get so much done, you know, prior to even speaking to you over the last few months. Okay, got it. So just based on that experience and based on this conversation so far, have you heard enough to move forward 
in investing in yourself with some financial coaching on my end? Have you heard enough to move forward with me? And right then and there, they're either going to say yes or no. They're going to say yes, but you know, right now, um, you know, wife and I are redoing the kitchen. So um, uh, we, we don't really have the funds right now. I say, okay, cool. When that is done, right now we're 27 minutes in, 24 minutes in. Okay, sir, when that's done, when you're finished with that, do velocity banking with the HELOC, you know, on the on that remodel expense thing. Uh, come back to me. In the meantime, watch these videos right here. Come to a live stream here. Check this out. When you're ready, I'm here. Done. I ended the call in 26 minutes. I just saved four minutes. Right. I ended the call in 21 minutes. Just saved nine minutes. So you, you're asking these questions. You're qualifying them so that you don't waste their time and they don't waste your time. Right. It's not just your time. You also don't want to waste people's time. You want to give them false hope. Right. I don't be giving people false hope. I'm like, listen, you want free help? Look at my YouTube channel. Look at the comment sections. I have hundreds of people that are not clients of mine. They loyal subscribers constantly watching the case studies because it has truly helped them get out of debt, even to the point where they want to educate their employees. They want to educate their household. They want to educate their friends. Right. And they're doing it. And so they didn't need to, to pay. They didn't need to because it, it clicked faster for them versus other people need more handholding. No problem. Right. It's all about qualifying. Very, very important there. So from from there, they book a call at that point. Let's just say best case scenario is right during the call. That's another thing that I'm pretty like, you know, on about because people forget, man, they got things to do. Right. So when I'm on the call, if I'm if I'm 19 minutes into the call and I have a yes, I'm going to say, OK, are you, at, are you in front of a computer right now? Yes, I am. OK, great. I just sent you an email. It's at the top link to enroll. This is the one I suggest. I want you to take a look at it right now. Got it. OK, um, thirty four ninety seven. OK, twenty four hundred dollars or whatever my pricing is at that time. OK, go ahead and enroll. And then I want to walk you through orientation. Boom. Sign. I just get an email. You just got a new blah, blah, blah. Enrolled. I do that. right. I, I got nine minutes left. I'm not going to waste that time and say, OK, sign up when you have time. No. Now. Right. You want freedom now? It's going to cost you. Right. Freedom is not free. Let's get to work. Right. Plus, they they see the urgency. They receive that urgency. Right. Like there's there's calls where I know they're not going to buy because they're not ready. I, I'm seeing their numbers. You can't afford it. Right. So therefore, you need to keep watching the content. You need to keep doing the pregame work. Get yourself aligned. Wonderful. Right. I'm not going to oversell or push past or waste my time trying to get that person enrolled. That's the last thing I want versus the other person that said yes. And they have the numbers to prove it and they have the cash flow to prove it and the credit score and the debt tool and they got everything in place. Let's go. Let's get to work. Right. So in those nine minutes, right, they're enrolling. I'm saying, OK, you're going to get an email as soon as you purchase. You're going to get an email. You create your account. I want you to log in. I want you to see everything. And I'm going to give you actionable steps once we get off this phone call so you can book the next call. And I'm going to have you do these things right here before we get on that call. I need to know all the numbers. You got to send me all the numbers. I need the numeros. OK, I need them. I need them. Right. So very important. So they become a client at that point. Great. Now, in terms of um, pricing, right, pricing your services, that's a whole nother, you know, monster to to solve. Um, here's how I go ahead and solve for the, the pricing. Right. So that's usually in between here is when pricing is, is being discussed. If you're not displaying your prices on your website or it's being shown all throughout the process up front, which I like. I like to show my prices all up front in advance. That's a qualifier in it in it of itself. Right? Someone sees the pricing, they're like, okay, I can do that. Or they say, okay, I'm not ready for that. It just immediately separated who's qualified and who's not. So I like doing that. And when you're first starting out, it might be tough. Figure out what your pricing is. What I typically like to do is I will take the person's current um, hourly rate. What do you currently make educating per hour? Right. And let's say they're uh, 35 bucks an hour. Right. So it's all right. Um, at the very least, we need to charge double that. At the very least, we need, we need to charge double that for what you're doing. Right. Then we can look at um, another strategy. So, you know, I'll leave that there in terms of um, right develop pricing. So that's one route. Current hourly rate, double that. That may or may not make sense for the service that you're providing. It's just one way of doing it. Something that I've 
implement it before for myself. Here's another way, identifying the, the value. What is the value in dollar amount if you can identify it? Like you can literally mathematically identify it. What is the value that they get in return for investing in your program, right? So let's say the average student loan debt in America when someone graduates is six figures. Let's just say six figures, 100,000, 100,000 bucks. All right. So you're telling me that you could save a household a hundred grand that they don't have to pay by going through your student loan debt course, by going through your college debt free course, whatever you name it, debt free, how to go to college debt free. All right. Boom. That's the course name. There's probably already one name that wouldn't doubt it. Right. Somebody in the marketplace is already doing what you're doing. So you can use that as your measurement stick to develop your pricing. So the value, six figures, hundred grand. So if I can save a family a hundred grand, then what's five grand? Right? Think about it. If I save you a hundred grand, what the heck is $5,000? That's nothing. You give me 5%, I give you back 95, 100% in return, right? You give me 5% of what I'm going to save you in student loan debt. You could do that as well. You can create a scale. That's another way to develop pricing is to scale it according to the individual situation, right? So if you have um, a household and they have four children, all of them are 16, 17, 18, and 18, right? 16, 17, 18, 18. They're all preparing for college. Potentially, they all could probably accumulate $100,000, $100,000, dollars $100, $100, right? Four kids, right? Going to college. Okay. You look at the, the situation, you look at their numbers and like, look, family, I could save you guys 400 grand. Bam. You do the work, right? You stay committed. The kids need to be committed. Mom and dad needs, everybody needs to be committed on the same page. I could save you 400 grand. Um, what is $10,000? Right? So you, so you just went from charging double your currently hourly rate, which is what, 70, maybe 80, maybe 100, maybe $150 an hour. And that's one way of doing it. That's still trading time for money, or you trade value for value, value for value. That's a good way of developing your pricing, okay? The other way is simply uh, market research. Market research, that's important. To identify who in the marketplace today has positioned themselves as a coach, as a consultant, they come from the education space. They're now teaching students. They're teaching households, families, how to avoid student, how to avoid six figure student loan debt. And that market research you do, whoever you look up, right? You want to identify who the experts are. So you're looking for the experts, the people who position themselves as experts. If you're 25 years in the industry, you're, you're an expert, but you just haven't expressed it yet. And the marketplace hasn't called you an expert yet. You haven't even called yourself an expert. So you want to look at who in the marketplace today has been doing what you've been doing for the last 25 years, but they've been public about it. So now they're the expert. You are not. Although you have the same amount of experience as this person, you could be charging what they're charging, but the marketplace, the consumer will not buy from you because this person is currently dominating the space. So they're not going to buy from you at, at, you know, their pricing when they look at you and you don't even have a website. This person has a whole team, website, everything. The whole point of it is to compare, see, okay, what does an expert charge? Oh, they're charging between five and $10,000 for their expert services, the same stuff that I'm going to provide them. So what you could do is you can scale it and you can provide that same service, right? You do your homework. You see what is it that they're providing? What are they providing? What are they doing? How can I do the same thing, but for far less? And you could charge a third, 60 plus percent less than what the expert charges. And you can still have a fantastic payday, right? So a third of 10,000, okay, 30%, 33, 3,500 bucks, right? 3,000 to 3,500 bucks for whatever the service is that you're, you're providing, right? From there, once you develop the pricing, the other way to help really fortify the pricing to make sure you're, you're, you're doing it right is you look at the, the free time you have and the amount of time that it's going to take to provide that value to the client. So if it's a 10 hour job, 
let's say, and that consists of 10 phone calls an hour a piece, and you're charging $3,000 divided by 10, they're paying $300 an hour for your service. And again, you need to be able to express the value. You're like, look, I'm helping you not spend, avoid a $100,000 expense for $3,000, for $3,500, for five grand, whatever it is, times however many kids you have right? Because it's going to be the same strategy, very similar, right? A little variation. Maybe the kid wants to go out of state. The other one wants to go in state. The other one wants to go to Ivy League. The other one goes to military, whatever it is. So you're expressing that value, which is extremely important. You create the service and you map out the time it's going to take. And you can be fully transparent and provide all these numbers. Like I, I do it in my own, uh, um, what is this called? A funnel, right? In my whole automatic system and process, I explain to people what they are getting when they enroll in my program, right? I make it very abundantly clear, foolproof, right? Very, very foolproof, right? So we'll, I'll show an example. Right, so I'll, I'll show my numbers, show you my program, just so you can see like, oh, interesting. So I have my seven year financial freedom program. So it's a financial freedom program, velocity banking, infinite bank, everything that I teach on this channel. Boom. We're going to cover it in seven years or less. We're going to create financial freedom and independence within seven years or less. That's the goal, right? And I say, look, in that time, we're going to have a max of 56 calls that do not expire. So those calls might go past seven years and I'm perfectly fine with that. I show the pricing up front. I say, boom, here's what it is. 3497. Each call is one hour long, right? 34.97 divided by 56. So that's $62.44 per call. Then I explain to them, look, here's my current hourly rate. That's my current hourly rate. If you were to pay me per hour for 56 calls, that's how much you would pay. $13,832. That's how much my time is worth today, 2022. So you could pay that or you could save $10,000. $335, right? Very simple. And like, all right, so let's see uh, 34.97 divided by 247. You would have to do 14 calls to reach that number. And you might say, I'm, I'm willing to just do that because I may not need that many calls. So some people stay over here. They might, that's what I'm saying. So I, I provide the options, fully transparent, right? I say, look, I'm interested in working with people for a lifetime, right? For a lifetime, but I'm also available here as well. You want to feel me out. You want to try me out and see what, what this is all about. All right. So you pay for one call. That's usually what happens most of the time. Anyways, someone will invest in maybe one, two, maybe three calls. Never seen anyone go over four phone calls before investing in one of my longer term programs, right? Providing the value, provide just boom. There it is. Transparent. So when you, when you provide that transparency up front, you don't stutter on your numbers, you know, your numbers. It's, it's not that hard to be genuine and truthful in the value that you provide. The more confident you are, the more they believe that you can actually do what the heck you're saying. And that's what they need. That's what the, that's what the person needs. That's what they're looking for. So we're going to do some market research. I'm going to show you how I do my market research. I learned this from another YouTuber called Vanessa Lau, who has a phenomenal YouTube channel. She talked about doing market research on your uh, quote unquote competitors or people who are already in the industry doing what you do. So I picked it up from her. So shout out to her, right? So I'm going to share my screen, right? What is the total student loan debt in America? 1.6 trillion. According to Google, five days ago, the federal student loan portfolio currently totals more than 1.6 trillion owed by about 43 million borrowers. So we know this is market research. You're identifying the problem in your purpose. Your purpose, let's just say, is to help families dot, 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 by helping them become college debt free, debt free in their college, avoid student loans. So now you know who you're going after. You have 43 million Americans, right? That's part of your market research. Okay, cool. So I'm going to write 43 million Americans. That's the marketplace. If I had 1% of 43 million, 1%, that's 430,000 clients. I don't know anyone in the marketplace today. I don't know anyone in the marketplace today that has over 430,000 clients in their, in their business. Now, I know that there's people in the marketplace who have spoken to millions of people, but I don't know anyone. I can honestly say that they have served clients one to one 430,000 times. Okay. I've been doing my business for the last four years and I have personally served 
at least 1,500 people at this point, at least 1,500, maybe a little bit more, four years. Times that by 40 years, I'm not even at 100,000. But I can assure you that I'll probably speak to millions of people in those 40 years that I am in business, right? So just that's just showing you the demand, the marketplace that's out there. There is no competition whatsoever. So you look at who is dominating the space right now and even looking at how much followers they have and whatnot. There is still so much space available. It's insane. Okay. So we identified the problem. 1.6 trillion student loan debt. Okay. You write that down. We got 43 million American borrowers. So that's the um, marketplace of potential clients that we can go after. 1% of that is 430,000. 1% of 430,000 is 4,300. And 1% of that is 43 clients. 43 clients times, say, five grand is $215,000 a year in revenue. Not bad, right? Not bad at all. You're in the top 10% of, of income in America. And you helped 1% of 1% of 1% of the marketplace 1% of 1 point of 43 million then do 1% again then do 1% again right so 1% of 1% of 1% is like 0 .001 0 .00001 that's not bad and you generate how much money multiple six figures okay let's do some more research how to go to college debt free look who look who shows up at the top better money habits how to plan for college who is this bank of america that's your competition okay so they're providing Maybe some services here, maybe pay, maybe free. Who knows, right? 17 ways to go to college debt-free. That's your content right there. Duh. Boom. Look at that. Google's doing all the work for you. This is what people type. This is what your client is typing. How to go to college debt-free. So then you make a live stream that says how to go to college debt-free. How to go to college debt-free. Not bad. Okay. Look what else. People also ask, is it possible to get out of college debt-free? Going to an in-state public college is one of the best ways to graduate without debt. Huh. How do people afford college without debt? Huh. Nine ways to pay for college without financial aid. Without financial aid. Interesting. How can I get out of college debt? What is the fastest way to get out of college debt? Is college worth all the debt? What happens if you refuse to pay college debt? How much usually is college debt? What is considered low college debt? How do most people pay for college? Ladies and gentlemen, this is all your content. This is what Google, largest search engine in the world, is saying people are asking for. So that is your content. Every single live stream should be about that. These questions right here. How to pay for college without student loans. Let's look at this guy. The money, Who's the money geek? Mark Kantrowitz. Maybe he has a program. Maybe he doesn't. What I'm, what I'm seeing is a lot of information, which is great. But what really helps people take action on all this information is a strategic program. A course, right? Coaching and consulting. So I, I already did my research prior, right? The second place I go is YouTube. How to go to college debt free. Boom. Who goes? Who's that guy? Okay. That's your competitor. He's talking about it. Who's Shane? Let's click on Shane. All right. 328 career investing success. Eh, don't think he really covers student loan, but he just maybe is just sharing a story. Look at this lady. Curly cries. 132,000 subs. Okay. But is she talking about student loan debt? No. This looks like a, uh, you know, more about her hair. But look, how I graduated college every with no loans, tips on how you can do the same, plus receipts. So she's showing the proof. So I got a receipts. She's showing the proof. All right. Who else we got? The Rachel Cruz show. I know she's connected with Dave Ramsey. Our Rich Journey. I like them a lot, but I know they don't really cover student loans. So again, look, look, look at who is ranking at the highest levels and they don't even really cover student loan debt. These people don't have a specific, like Dave Ramsey does not have a specific service to help you apply for scholarships, apply to the universities, right? Internships, right? Scholarships before college, scholarships during college, scholarships after college. Just look at that. Nobody's doing it. They're just giving you information, general, right? They're general. This is general, general. Ain't nothing specific here. That's not valuable to me. His and her money. I know them. Again, another YouTube channel. They do not cover student loan debt. They talk about how to pay it off, but they're not they're not covering the process to apply for scholarships, 
for free money in the marketplace, government assistance, like who's really doing that? Like I got to scroll for days to, to try to find maybe this person might do it. Debt free Dana raising a family on a budget. Mm, not really seeing it, right? It's about raising a family on a budget. It's not it's a look, look, no one's doing it, guys. That's a huge opportunity. So maybe I have to refine my search. Let's see how to apply for scholarships before college. And the more narrow you are with your search, right? The, the better you'll uh, be able to do your market research and then see where you can really dominate in the space. So how to apply for scholarships before college. This video got 494,000 views. How I got 500,000 in college scholarships, what no one tells you. Okay, that is attractive. Let's see what she has to say. Hope you feel beautiful today. But look, it's it, it don't even feel like it's about college. I see health and wellness, you know, her personal story, yada, yada, 118,000 subs. So she went viral for that one video. Okay, again, I don't think she has a program. Doesn't look like it. How to get scholarships for college, full rides, local scholarship, application tips. That looks a little bit more, you know. Hi, I'm. Uh, uh, specific, a little more specific. I'd have to find that video, but all right. Market research, guys. The nine best college scholarship websites. Okay, cool. So as you're doing your market research, all right, look how much time this is taking us. It's not taking us a lot of time, all right? See what this person has. I talk about education things. Now, this might be more specific. This might be more specific. And here's what's even smarter for you to do when you're entering this space is to know exactly who is in your space because they can be potential collaborators with you. If if this person, the almost astrophysicist, if this person has a program or a course or something that relates to college student loan debt because this person puts it straight forward. Look, look, look. I talk about education things. Student loan debt has got to be one of those things. Person's got 15,000 subs, so not a whole lot compared to the other ones that we've come across. All right. If I'm brand new, no subscribers, let's just say this is the person that is in your space doing exactly what you do, let's just say, then I would watch a lot of their content. I would try to get to know them. I would comment, I would subscribe, I would like, right? Get on their radar a little bit while I'm simultaneously creating content. And then I would eventually reach out to them for a potential collaboration to talk about student loan debt, right? College and student loan debt and all that stuff is what I would go to them about. Look at this guy, Thomas Tries. Hey guys. What's he's trying? What is he? 3,000 subs. Hmm. See, that's another thing. I look for, I look for YouTubers that are low in subscribers, but very, very niche in what they do. Cause I can assure you they're the ones that have the people that are actually going to be clients that, that big general, those, these general people, right? They have another big business elsewhere. Like, like, you know, Dave Ramsey has a big business elsewhere, but this isn't his main thing, right? So in addition to some of the research that I've done, I also found this person. Okay. This is an example of an educator, someone who is very niche in helping people pay for college debt free go to college, debt free, get the scholarships, apply, et cetera, et cetera. Excuse me. Powerful, powerful. So I connected with this woman because we're both going to be speaking on the same stage uh, next year together. Her name's Denise Thomas. So she says, does the idea of paying for your kid's college keep you up at night? I'm pretty sure it keeps up a lot of parents. Says, I was terrified of nearly lifelong crushing college debt for my children. 70% of college students graduate with student loan debt. Doesn't have to be that way. Give your child the opportunity to become one of the 30% that begins their young adult life with complete financial freedom. How is the 30% doing it? I did the research. This person said I did the research. So if you're brand new, they did the research. They just saved you hours of research. Now you could just hone in on one or two people that are in your space and then create content that's similar to theirs, but you're customizing it for what you do. So they said, I did the research, so you don't have to. With more than 7,000 hours of research and my proprietary six-step strategy, my two homeschool children attended college on $199,000 in scholarships for four years of college, debt-free with cash left over. This strategy is repeatable. 600,000 college students graduate debt-free every year. I'm Denise Thomas, your debt-free college coach. Ooh, ooh, that's a name. She says, I cracked the code to free college for both my kids and so can you. 
College doesn't have to be a debt sentence. Ooh, clean, clean. Testimonies, clean. Got it. Boom. So then you know what I do as a, as a, as a new content creator? I might even buy their course and learn from it. Shoot. There might even be an opportunity to have a strategic partnership. How big is this person going to get to the point where they need, she needs to duplicate herself. So I might not, I might not even have to do all that work. I can latch on to someone else's vision or mission that is in alignment with my mission and vision and grow with that person while simultaneously creating my own content that just leads them right back to where they're going. Right. I would learn all about them. All right. This is what we believe. We believe all college students should have the chance to graduate without debt. We believe that the opportunity cannot be grasped without the appropriate knowledge. We believe that everyone has a superpower, even teens. Look at this. Clean. Clean. Look at this. Look at this. I, all I see is opportunity. That's all I see when I, when I look at this. All right. Powerful stuff. I'll do one more example, just showing you how like real this stuff is. So when I first started on YouTube, this is what I did. I just typed in Velocity Banking. Now, the only reason why I'm up top is because I'm signed into my account. But there's other people. So you got this person, Life Benefits. This guy, Velocity Channel, Chris Chapman, School of Personal Finance, Invest with Wisely, the approved guy, the Quack Brothers, uh, D'Amica, My Velocity Banking, Mike Adams, Think Wealthy with the Mike Adams. And there's another lady named Laura Pitko. So I basically looked at who was already creating content on Velocity Banking, studied their YouTube channels, and then reiterated everything that they were already talking about and made it my own, customized it. Why? Because that is a strategy of being effective, right? Not wasting time. I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel here, guys. I'm looking at what works, who's doing what, what works, and how do we go from there, right? So that was what? We spent an hour and 40 minutes together of doing market research, identifying the strategy by identifying the problem in our purpose, creating solution, market and monetize your solution, personal story, documentation, case studies, create a channel, go live, boom, create the process. Much of this is automatic, right? Knowing your numbers is key. This person is disciplined and they're doing velocity banking simultaneously while building a second stream of income that doesn't interfere with velocity banking. It's an add-on.